Tonight, I can reveal the Albanese government will announce special envoys for anti-Semitism and Islamophobia to deal with the disintegration of social cohesion in Australia. It comes as Anthony Albanese and Penny Wong stand accused of presiding over the worst rise in anti-Semitism since World War II. They face criticism, quite rightly, for abandoning Jewish Australians. Yet the Prime Minister can't just appoint an anti-Semitism envoy. He has to pretend there's an Islamophobia crisis as well, even though there's not. And so there's going to be two envoys. The front-runner for the anti-Semitism envoy is Gillian Siegel, who's a lawyer and a former president of the Executive Council of Australian Jewry. The idea is the two figures would report to the Prime Minister rather than just the Minister for Multicultural Affairs. This is probably wise, given that it's the accident-prone Andrew Giles. Now, an anti-Semitism envoy is something I've personally been campaigning for behind the scenes. I've been raising it with senior Labor figures for five months now. There are similar roles in the United States and the UK. Here was the UK government's independent advisor on anti-Semitism, Lord Mann of Holbeck, when I interviewed him for Maccabi in October last year. He's brilliant. We're going to train every teacher, every teacher in anti-Semitism, all the school teachers. I think that will, over time, make a very big difference. I've been horrified at how little teachers understand of what anti-Semitism is, of even recognising it. If we can't do that, how can we possibly win? It's a failing we've failed to do it. So Lord Mann is a UK Labour politician, not Conservative, and he's not Jewish. He works, as he said there, with school teachers, universities, sporting clubs and political parties as well in training and educating them about anti-Semitism. Now, here in Australia, I'm told the Albanese government hasn't been able to settle on what they believe is the right person for the job, and that's why they've been taking such a long time in making this announcement. Instead, they've been allowing anti-Semitism to fester. Yet, how long did it take the Albanese government to find a special advisor to oversee Israel's investigation into the death of Australian aid worker Zomi Frankham? One weekend. It was just one weekend before they announced Air Chief Marshal Binskin would take on that task. It's funny, isn't it, how they can find people to do jobs very quickly when they want to? Well, the anti-Semitism advisor will need to have the courage to really tackle and fight this hatred. And to do that, they need to call out the government itself for the language it uses that, in my opinion, is contributing to the rise of this ancient hatred. And maybe the government could pull back on having backbenchers with no qualifications accusing Israel of war crimes, like Ed Husick did on Sky News on Sunday. This is a systematic problem or systemic problem within the way in which the Israeli government has conducted these operations in Gaza. And that's why you have seen so many Palestinians killed. And that is an issue that needs to be confronted. And you can tell that the international community has basically determined that Israel um, has undertaken those failings. Well, journalist Christopher Dorr in The Nightly asked why Ed Husick... Australia's science minister was commenting on this issue and being allowed to undermine our relationship with Israel. Christopher Dorr wrote his only qualification to speak on this topic, apparently, is that he's Muslim. Think about that for a moment. For Labor, is this actually about religion after all? Is this about Israel and Palestine or is it about Islam and Judaism? Well, in this brilliant piece that I also mentioned last night, Christopher Dorr exposes how Ed Husick has gone unchallenged in accusing Israel wrongly of war crimes. He writes, Albanese is happy to allow Cabinet Minister Husick 
to indiscriminately accuse Israel of deliberately targeting and killing thousands of civilians. Outrageous and despicable, divisive, wrong. And you have to ask, why weren't Ed Husick and Penny Wong and Anthony Albanese and the rest of them this angry with Hamas after October 7? Well, Ed Husick isn't the only one accusing Israel of war crimes. Over on the ABC, 7.30 host Sarah Ferguson told a senior Israeli official that she just didn't believe him. You use the language of tragedy. I want to ask you some questions about whether this reaches um, to the level of a war crime. Unless you have evidence about the people inside the trucks, was this a war crime? I'm not accepting your view that it's a mistake. There's a lot, lot further to go on this story. So the ABC host there not accepting his view, Israel's position, that this was a mistake. Mounting the argument then that this was a war crime? Well, what is her argument that Israel deliberately killed an aid worker when they've been facilitating nearly 20,000 aid trucks into Gaza in the past six months alone? It's absurd. Meanwhile, Penny Wong tonight, and I'm breaking this news now exclusively, is expected to call for a Palestinian state in a speech tonight. That's right. The Foreign Minister Penny Wong is giving a speech tonight where she's expected to call for a Palestinian state. She's expected to outline her vision for the region, like anyone cares what her vision is. Now, the issue is, and we haven't seen her full remarks yet, I've got this from Labor sources today, but the issue is a Palestinian state is fanciful at the moment. They've squandered billions of dollars in aid, Hamas has, using it for terrorist tunnels and infrastructure. And you can't have a state when it's governed by Hamas, as even Penny Wong is expected tonight to acknowledge. Well, longtime Harvard professor Alan Dershowitz made this point about the calls for a Palestinian state right now when I spoke to him last week. There has to be a two-state solution, but it can't be created uh, in the wake of Hamas's uh, terrorism and brutality. The structure should be uh, built toward the goal of a two-state solution over time. So until the international community get off Israel's back as it eliminates Hamas terrorists, until Gaza is free from Hamas, there can be no Palestinian state. For there to be a Palestinian state, the Gazans also need to recognise Israel's right to exist and to stop chanting the genocidal cry from the river to the sea. Or perhaps this chant at protests attended by mainstream political parties like the Greens, will be one issue the Albanese government's new anti-Semitism adviser will raise as extremely unhelpful to the flare-up in racism that we're seeing.